Last week we did simple distillation and this week we're going to be doing fractional distillation and I talked about last week that we will get better results with the fractional distillation. The reason being is that with fractional distillation we introduce more theoretical plates. We talked about what a theoretical plate is. Theoretical plate is a condensation vaporization cycle. Each time it condenses and vaporizes, condenses, vaporizes, each one of those is a theoretical plate. Now the way we can introduce more theoretical plates, this would make give us better results, is that we can extend a column up before we go to our distillation head. Now last week you probably noticed that as you were distilling the liquid you saw some falling back in, condensing, falling back, and it evaporate, condense, fall back, evaporate, condense. So each one of those, is, each time it does that is a theoretical plate. So by extending the column, put a column in here, give us more length, then we would have more theoretical plates. That's more surface area for the vapors to condense on and then evaporate off of. And each time you go through one of those condensation evaporations, you get the vapors that are coming up is more rich in the lower boiling point, uh, point compound. And the condensate that's falling back is richer in the higher boiling component. So we can introduce more theoretical plates by putting a longer column on here. Another way we can increase theoretical plates to give it more surface area, and this is what we're going to do this week, we're going to put steel sponge in the column. So not only are we lengthening in the column, we're putting steel sponge in here. You could put anything for it to condense on. It could be a copper sponge or it could be uh, glass beads. I've seen people put glass beads in there. Just something more surface for the vapor to condense onto and then a then vaporize off of. So this is giving us more theoretical plates. <clears throat> now, this week our fractional distillation, the fractional distillation can separate anything up as long as it's got at least one degree boiling point difference, it can separate them. Whereas with the simple distillation we talked about last week, you really need 40 to 50 degree difference uh, minimum to be able to separate those. <clears throat> So this week, as I've mentioned before, we will get better results. You should have a good flat line here at about 81 degrees as you're plotting your data. And you'll probably only have, I don't know, maybe seven or eight mixture anywhere you're on the slope. It's a mixture. And then it should flatten back out here at about 111. That's the pure toluene. Got the pure cyclohexane, pure toluene. I can't spell. And then here in the mix, here in the middle, anywhere there's slope is mixture. Now, when you plot these out, oftentimes here in the beginning, there's a little dip. There's often a little dip here in the beginning. And that's what I want to talk about. This, if you see this, this is due to an azeotrope. <coughs> the condensate that we collect into the vial, well, if you have the azeotrope, <coughs> those first few drops that you collect in your vial will often be very cloudy. <clears throat> and that's because of that azeotrope. It's water that is azeotroping over. Now, what is an azeotrope? An azeotrope 
is when a mixture distills at a or boils at a lower temperature than either of the pure components. The, probably the most famous azeotrope is, most well known, is between ethanol and water. Ethanol and water, the, well, a 95% ethanol and 5% water solution will boil at a lower temperature than either pure water or pure ethanol. The, let's look at a, at a plot here. Pure ethanol boils at 78.3 degrees. But, the 95% ethanol, 5% water boils at 78.15. I know it's not much, but that is a little bit of a difference. It does boil at a lower temperature. Of course, pure water would be at 100 degrees. That's where we get the pure water at the end. <clears throat> but this little dip is due to an azeotrope. Now, when do we see azeotropes? Uh, this is typically seen when we have hydrogen bonding. This is strong intermolecular uh, forces that are in play here to give the azeotrope. So ethanol and water can hydrogen bond. So oftentimes when we are distilling, if there's some water in, present in our mixture, we will see an azeotrope with the water. And so that's the little dip. So again, this azeotrope is typically due to water. I mean, uh, uh, well, it is water, but uh, hydrogen bonding. I'll just say most of the time, normally it's water that's present. That's usually the reason that we see an azeotrope. Maybe there was our glassware is not dry, there's a little bit of water present, and we'll see a little dip. So you may or may not see the azeotrope. <clears throat> okay, that's basically it for this week. Uh, so you'll do the exact same experiment that you did last week. It's just that we're going to have the column with the steel sponge in there. And you should get much, much better results this week. So it's a trade-off. Fractional distillation will give better results, but it takes longer. It's slower. Uh, simple distillation is it's easier to set up. It's faster. But we don't get as good results with the simple distillation. Unless there's a huge difference in boiling points. So it's a trade-off as to which one how pure you really need your product to be.